Hello and welcome to this video about properties of fluids. In this video we are going to look at some different principles. We're going to look at Archimedes principle which has to do with buoyancy, Pascal's principle having to do with pressure, and Bernoulli's principle which has to do with pressure and velocity. We'll also take a look at what viscosity is. So let's start by taking a look at this ship. What is it that makes this ship stay on the surface of the water and not sink to the bottom? What is the force that's pushing up on this ship? It's called the buoyant force. Buoyancy is the ability of a fluid, either a liquid or a gas, those are both fluids, it's the its ability to exert an upward force on an object immersed in it. So here in our diagram we have the buoyant force that is pushing upward on the object that is immersed in it. So you can see here in our diagram if the buoyant force is greater than the force uh, that the object is exerting on the water itself, then the object floats. If the buoyant force is less than the uh, force that the object is exerting, its weight, remember that's the, the weight of the object is the force it exerts in the downward direction, well then that is going to sink, that, that object will sink. Now back in the 3rd century BC, long time ago, a Greek mathematician named Archimedes made a discovery about buoyancy. Archimedes, it's called Archimedes' principle because he found that the buoyant force on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. So in other words, if we look at this example, here's our object that's being placed in the water. And if we place this object in the water, um, it's going to push water out of the way and displace that water as it begins to sink. But it will only displace the water until it's displaced the amount of water that's equal to the entire weight of that object. So you can see here, we have a situation where the weight of the water that is being displaced is less than that of the object. And so this object is sinking uh, because of that Archimedes principle. So obviously weight affects buoyancy. Um, if we replace those little circular objects from our last frame with um, these cubes, these blocks, one made of wood and one of aluminum. And if we think of this line as being the surface of the water, and we talk, talk about our buoyancy of wood versus aluminum in this case, obviously the weight of these is different. Both blocks are displacing the same amount of water, but the gravitational force on this wood block is not enough to make the wood block sink. Uh, because the weight of that wood block is much less than the weight of aluminum. This obviously has a lot to do with density, right? Uh, density, remember, is the amount of mass per volume. We know that wood has a much less density, it's, it's much less dense than a block of aluminum. This would have a greater density. And one way to know if something is going to float or sink is to compare its density to the density of the fluid in which it's placed. Um, an object will float, like the wood on the water, if its density is less than that of the fluid. So the density of wood is less than the density of water. Um, an object will sink if the density is greater than the density of the fluid that it's immersed in. Aluminum has a greater density than the density of water. So why would a steel ship float? Well, because when a, a ship is made out of steel, the hull of that ship is not solid steel. It's not like a solid block of, of metal. Uh, in fact, the the outside of the boat is made of steel, but that hull is filled with air. So the total density of the entire space of the boat is indeed less than the density of the water that it's uh, displacing. Now let's take a look at another principle. We'd like to look at something called Pascal's principle, named after a French scientist from the 1600s. But in order to talk about that, we first need to talk a little bit about pressure. What is 
pressure anyway. Pressure is just the force exerted per unit area. We can think of pressure with a capital P equal to the force divided by the area. Uh, pressure is measured in pascals, uh, capital P lowercase a, force being measured in newtons, and area being measured in meters squared. Oftentimes, pressure uh, will be given in kilopascals because one pascal is a very tiny little number, um, and a kilopascal is just equal to 1,000 pascals. So let's do a little example together knowing this uh, mathematical relationship. We know that atmospheric pressure at sea level is 101 kilopascals. So how much total force does Earth's atmosphere push on an average person at sea level? We're also told that we can assume the surface area of an average person to be 1.80 meters squared. So let's start by writing down what we know. We know pressure equals 101 kilopascals. Well, we'd like to convert that into pascals. We know 1,000 pascals equals 1 kilopascal, so we can multiply our 101 kilopascals by 1,000. We get 101,000 pascals. We also know the area is 1.80 meters squared, and those are the units that we want that in. Our unknown is our force. That's what we're trying to find out. So now we can use our mathematical relationship from above, uh, from right here. Pressure equals force divided by area. And I can plug values in for those and solve for the force. Here I've substituted the values into my equation. Um, if I multiply both sides of my equation by 1.80 meters squared, I can get rid of 1.80 meters squared on this side, and I'm left with simply force. So here we end up with force equals 182,000 pascal meters squared. We also know that a pascal is equal to a newton per meter squared. So when we substitute that in, our force ends up being in newtons, 182,000 newtons. So the idea behind Pascal's principle is that pressure applied to a fluid is transmitted throughout that fluid. For example, when you squeeze the end of a toothpaste tube, toothpaste emerges from the other end. The pressure has been transmitted through that fluid, through the toothpaste. So if we think about Pascal's principle as pressure in being equal to pressure out, we also know the relationship uh, between pressure and force and area. Remember that pressure equals force divided by area. So the pressure in is going to be equal to the force divided by area in, right? And the pressure out is going to be equal to the force out divided by the area out. So another way we can write that is force in divided by area in is equal to force out divided by area out. So this is a very useful principle when it comes to hydraulic lifts. Uh, they move heavy loads based on Pascal's principle right here. Uh, if we can look at this diagram and think about a hydraulic lift uh, where we have a pipe uh, filled with fluid connecting a small cylinder to a large cylinder. Um, the pressure that is applied to this small cylinder is transferred through the fluid to the large cylinder. And then with a hydraulic lift, you could use your weight here to lift something much heavier because pressure over here has got to be equal to pressure over there. Let's do a sample problem uh, thinking about hydraulic lifts. Let's say we have a hydraulic lift that's used to lift a very heavy machine that is pushing down on a platform that has a surface area of 2.8 meters squared. Um, and that heavy machine is pushing down with a force of 3,700 newtons. What force must be exerted on a little piston that has this much surface area, 0 0.072 meters squared, in order to lift this heavy machine? 
So I'm trying to find the force in, the force I need to put into uh, this little tiny piston in order to lift the heavy machine. That's my unknown. Listing my unknowns, I know the force out, that's the force, this force right here, uh, 3,700 newtons. I know my area in, it's that little tiny piston, uh, 0 0.072 meters squared. And I also know my area out, that's the area of the platform, our big platform, it's 2.8 meters squared. Now I can use my equation with Pascal's principle to solve this problem. I'll rewrite it right here. And now I can simply plug the values in. I'll, pl I'll plug uh, for force out into here, area out into here, area in uh, right here, and then I can solve for my force in. Here I plug those values in, and I can solve for force in if I multiply both sides of my equation by 0 0.072 meters squared. If I multiply this side by 0 0.072 meters squared, then I will, those will cancel out, and I will end up with force in being equal to this whole mess, which is simply 3,700 times 0 0.072 and that will be divided by 2.8. The meters squared cancel, and I'm left with only the units of newtons. Now does this make sense? 95 newtons? Well, the ratio of the forces should be about the same as the ratio of their areas. The area of the platform is about 90 times the area of that little tiny piston. And so therefore the force of the platform should be about 40 times greater than that 95 newtons. And it is. 3,700 is about 40 times greater than 95. So that makes sense. Let's take a look at one more principle, Bernoulli's principle. Uh, Bernoulli was a Swiss scientist in the 1700s who found that as the velocity of the, a fluid increases, the pressure exerted by that fluid decreases. We can think about this application uh, when we're talking about covering a garden hose. Um, Bernoulli's principle explains why restricting the flow of the fluid actually causes its velocity to increase. Bernoulli's principle also has applications for a lot of things that um, we might take for granted. One would be spray bottles or aspirators use Bernoulli's principle as the air flows through here, this is sort of uh, looking at this up close, uh, squeezing that pump causes the air to flow at a high velocity right along here, which creates that high velocity creates a low pressure, which basically pulls the fluid, the chemicals up uh, from this container and through that aspirator, through the tube. Bernoulli's principle is also really useful for airplanes. The low pressure here um, is created as the air is going traveling over the wing, uh, both over the wing and under the wing. The air has to travel faster over the top of the wing than the bottom of the wing because of the shape. That's why wings are shaped in this way. So as the air travels faster, over the top of the wing, that creates a low pressure here. And that lower pressure uh, gives lift to the airplane. More pressure is being exerted in the upward direction uh, than in that downward direction. One more property exhibited by a fluid is its tendency to flow. Uh, viscosity is a term that is used to describe the resistance of a fluid to flowing. Uh, you know that if you put uh, maple syrup in the refrigerator and then you pour it, it has a much higher viscosity than if you were to warm up that syrup. If you warm the syrup up first, uh, it's going to be a lot runnier, have a lower viscosity. It's not going to resist flowing as much. Honey is an, as a kind of a viscous fluid, right? Of course, if you warm it up, 
It will be a lot less viscous, a little more runny. Advanced ideas. What's the Venturi effect? Uh, here, look at magma. And it has varying viscosity depending on its composition. Tell me how lava viscosity affects volcano shape. Other ideas. You might have some great questions. Look into that, and I look forward to seeing you in class.